ಶ್ರೀನಾಥ ಮದ ನಮೋಹ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ವೃಂದಾವನ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನಕ್ಕೆ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಮಾವೇತ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದಕ್ಕೆ ನಂತರ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕಿ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತ ವಿರಂದ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುಹುವನ್ ಮೇಲಿತ ಜೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಜೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೂನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣರಘುನಾಥನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪದ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತಸ್ವಾಮಿನತೆ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷಾಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮನೆ ಗೌರತ್ವಿಷೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನೋಸು ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ರೂಢಿ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಥೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇ ನಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಾಯೇಶ್ವಭದ್ರೇಷು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತ್ಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿಕಿ 
कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम इस रिपीट श्लोक तपशौचम दया सत्यम पादाता अधर्मा शैस्त्रो भग्ना स्मय संगमदस्तव तपशौच दया सत्यता अधर्मा शैस्त्रो भग्ना स्मय संगमदस्तव तपशौच दया सत्यम पादाता अधर्मा शैस्त्रो भग्ना स्मय संगमदस्तव थ्री डिवटी कैन रिपीट एनी थ्री डिवटी तपशौच दया सत्यम शैस्त्रो भग्ना अधर्मा शैस्त्रो भग्ना संगमदस्तवय संगमदस्तव तपशौच दया सत्यमृता शैस्त्रो भग्ना अधर्मा शैस्त्रो भग्ना स्मय संगमदस्तव तपशौच दया सत्यमृता पादाता शैस्त्रो भग्ना अधर्मा शैस्त्रो भग्ना स्मय संगमदस्तव स्मय संगमदस्तव तप आस्तरी शौचम क्लेनलीनेस दया मर्सी सत्यम ट्रुथफुलनेस दस पाद लेग्स कृते इन द एज ऑफ सत्य कृता एस्टाब्लिश्ड अधर्म इलिजियासिटी अंश बै द पार्ट्स त्रय थ्री कंबाइंड भग्ना ब्रोकन स्मय राइड संग टू मच एसोसिएशन विद वेमेन मदई इंटॉक्सिकेशन तब यू आर एंसर पर पोर्ट बाइज डिवाइन ग्रेस ऐसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्री प्रभुपाल के इन द एज ऑफ सत्य ट्रुथफुलनेस यूर लेग्स वेर एस्टैब्लिश बाय द फोर प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ ऑस्टेरिटी क्लेनलीनेस मर्सी एंड ट्रुथफुलनेस बट इट अपीयर्स द थ्री ऑफ योर लेग्स आर ब्रोकन due to rampant irreligion in the form of pride lust for women and intoxication so there is a conversation between cow and the bull personified uh, earth is cow personified religion is bull so they both are having a conversation so the bull has four legs indicating satyam shaucham daya and tapa uh, tapa shaucham daya satyam these four legs out of the three legs are broken in the age of kali yuga which means except truthfulness the other three are broken hmm. so that's what uh, the cow is feeling pity for the bull for hmm. the deluding energy or material nature can act upon the living beings proportionately in terms of the living beings falling prey to the deluding attraction of maya moths are captivated by the glaring brightness of light and thus they become prey to the fire like fire doesn't chase after moths but the moths become allured by fire and they enter into fire and get roasted similarly the deluding material nature is present in this world and uh, to the proportion the living beings are attracted by her glitter and glamour they approach her then they get victimized entangled they get entangled they victimized just like you are walking in the market 
you will see some glittering and glamouring glitter and glamour commodity something it's a cheap commodity but looks very attractive so once you get into your business uh, talk with that fellow you know he takes a big money from you and uh, he gives you a good for nothing commodity correct no it happens like that in the train many times they say in 100 rupees you can get three you know three things items you can get correct no and then after getting it when you, when you go home you realize it was waste I got cheated because in the first go it looks very appealing to the eyes, but later like if I somebody says this baggie is just a uh, hundred rupees, mm-hmm. you wonder oh baggies are five hundred rupees how are you getting in hundred? You buy one, you put it in water, it will just shrink. Mm-hmm. Then you realize that's what he's saying. Maya is selling cheap commodities for the bewildered living any days. Mm-hmm. So. it cannot act upon the living any days but can only act proportionately in terms of living being falling prey to the deluding attraction is that point clear he is saying similarly the deluding energy is always captivating the conditioned souls to become prey to the fire of delusion and the vedic scriptures warn the conditioned souls not to become prey to delusion but to get rid of it the vedas warn us to go not to the darkness of ignorance but to the progressive path of light the lord himself also warns that the deluding power of material energy is too powerful to overcome what is that was daivi hi asha gunamayi mama maya duratyaya but one who completely surrenders unto the lord can easily do so mama evi e prapadyante Maya me tham, parantite. So if you surrender to the Lord, you can escape Maya. Lord is telling. So the the there are two choices for every living being. Either choose Krishna, you are saved from Maya, or choose Maya, you forget Krishna. And what is the difference between choosing these two options? Like for example, follow the state laws of the country, and you are a free bird. Or break the laws of the country, forget the laws of the country. and then go to jail and be beaten up by the police correct no so there are two options like that yeah but to surrender unto the lotus feet of the lord is also not very easy like that he says isn't it so we all know surrendering to krishna although the process is very simple prabhupada starts you know rise early in the morning and take a bath where dwati kurta just come in front of the lord chant the holy name 16 rounds follow the four regulated principles take only prasadam associate only with devotees and keep away from glitter and glamour of maya and just do your job to earn your livelihood to keep body and soul together labho jivate avata and then inquire about how to go back to godhead from the scriptures and by association of devotees and in this way keep your life basically very simple maximize krishna time minimize maya time and anybody who keeps life material life simple and spiritual life uh, very important and focused hmm, they very easily conquer maya maya cannot touch them hmm. such devotees can remain in the material world like a drop of water on a lotus leaf because drop of water on lotus leaf does it touch it so we will never stick to the material world huh? we will be able to Uh, remain aloof from the material world by leading a life of surrender to guru and krishna you will only do if guru says do this if guru says don't do this you will not do it so your life becomes very easy for you <laughs> very easy so like children parents say don't touch fire they don't touch don't touch knife they don't touch don't go out they don't go out uh, and sit down and study they study sleep early they sleep early you know So what our parents say, children do. Then children are very much protected by the parents, correct? No. Now if the ch- child thinks, why should I do what they say? They say, don't go out, but I will go out, and he gets accident or something, correct? No. They don't touch fire. He touched fire. Ah, 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 hands are burning, clothes are burning, and you have to rush him to doctor. So in this way, by not following Krishna's order and Krishna's uh, in- instructions in the scriptures. then we invite trouble for ourselves so krishna's instructions are not very difficult he says sarvadharman parityajya 
Mahamekam Sharanam Parijaya. Just surrender to what I am teaching in Gita, that's all. Hmm? And not only that, he says, even if you have done a lot of sins in the past, Aham Tvam, Sarva Papebhyo, Mokshi Shami, Mahashi Shami, do not fear, I will take care of everything. Hmm? I will own you and I will take complete care of you, he's saying. But then to surrender to the Lord's lotus feet is also not very easy. Why it's not easy? Anybody can say why? What is the difficulty? Mike? Because we are covered with contaminated. Because we are covered with contaminated consciousness. Now, even if you are covered with contaminated consciousness, if you have faith in the Lord, you can still surrender to Him. For example, yes, it is true that we are contaminated, uh, so we are really fallen. Then we have to take the shelter of the Lord all the more. Correct, no? For example, you have disease. Will you go to doctor or not? Yes, no. Yes. Will you say, because I am diseased, I am unable to go to doctor. Will you say that? No. Yeah. If I am diseased, I, then I have to go to doctor. Then, because you know very well, Yes, I have a disease. If you go to doctor and take tablets and I eat the tablet, my disease will be gone, gone and I'll become happy. So, a person suffering from disease naturally has to go to doctor. Correct? Yes. Then why are we not surrendering to Lord? Yes. False ego? Ah, false ego is one good answer. Yes, correct. False ego. Ahankar. Yeah. Because the living entity has stubborn obstinacy, Prabhupada writes in teaching, teachings of Queen Kunti. What is it? Stubborn obstinacy, mm -hmm. refusing to surrender to the Lord. And also, the living entity has doubts on the Lord. He doesn't believe in the Lord's words. And he, although he has four defects, he has imperfect senses, he commits mistakes, you know, he also is illusion, and he has cheating propensity, still a living entity has a high estimate of himself. Who I am. Huh? He's very proud. Huh? He's very, he has a big hole in his character. I and mean, he has four defects. He has, he's subjected to Rajaguna, Tamaguna. Huh? Um, but he is not humble enough. Huh? He thinks, I am learned, I am educated, I am very proud, huh? I am great. Therefore, he is unable to take shelter of the Lord. So, you, you will see that if somebody uh, is weak due to the conditionings, and they have respect for the Lord, they can easily go and take shelter of the Lord. But if somebody is weak-minded and subject to conditionings, but at the same time, despite conditioning, is very proud also, huh? by false ego, then they cannot take shelter. So Prabhupada writes many things. One is stubborn obstinacy. Another one is his, his imperfect senses. And he is subjected to, I mean, he also... Uh, has committed a lot of sinful activities, past and present misdeeds, Prabhupada says. Because a sinful person cannot go to the Lord. A sinful person wants to find out, figure out a problem, a way to solve the problem on his own. <laughs> pious people run to the feet of the Lord whenever there is a trouble. Gajendra was pious. So, as soon as there was danger, what he did? He called out the Lord, Narayana, like that. Ajamila also had called Narayana, Narayana several times, his son. Therefore, at the time of death, he could call Narayana because of having called several times. Mm -hmm. So, Draupadi also, when she was in trouble, she called out Krishna. Mm -hmm. Pious devotees of the Lord, they call out Krishna. So, those who are not pious, mm -hmm. those who have been sinful, at least they should have respect for the saintly order. So, the sinful people sometimes don't respect the saints also. They don't respect the Lord also. They don't respect the scriptures also. In fact, they ridicule the scriptures in fact, they think they know better than what is mentioned in scripture. How can they take shelter, correct, no? That is the reason they can't take shelter. They're false ego, hmm? ahankar, very boastful. Hmm? And uh, they, they consider material success to be everything. Hmm? So, therefore, surrender into lotus feet of the Lord is also not very easy, he says. But here, another very important point is coming up now. Such surrender is possible by persons who have cultured transcendental knowledge based on the principles of austerity, cleanliness, mercy and truthfulness. These four principles of advanced civilization were remarkable features of the age of Satya. In that age, practically every human being was a qualified Brahmana of the highest order and in the spiritual orders of life, they were all Paramahamsas or the topmost men of the renounced order. By cultural standing, 
the human beings were not at all subjected to deluding energy. Such strong men of character were competent enough to get away from the clutches of Maya, he is saying. So, this is the most important statement. Who are such strong men uh, who are competent enough to get away from clutches of Maya? Such means who is the, who is the right talking about? Ah, one who follows these four principles of austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness. Austerity means what? You know, voluntary restraint of pleasure giving activities which are harmful for you. Hmm? For example, <clears throat> eating a cocoa chocolate or smoking a cigarette or drinking liquor, taking to drugs. Hmm? This may give a small titillation. Although it may give little pleasure in the beginning, one should resist that. That is called austerity. That is austerity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Similar to cleanliness. How cleanliness comes? Actually, uh, when a man and woman come together, uh, they do many dirty things together. Huh? Needless to mention about them. Mm -hmm. Indulging in sex life. Huh? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes students, uh, their parents uh, put trust in them and send them to another city for uh, doing a job or doing studies. But then the students uh, have money in their pocket. Then they become victim of bad friends. Then they roam around in the city. Sometimes they go to red light areas huh? where there are some prostitutes living. The prostitutes invite them. They go and they indulge with the prostitute and they get sexually transmitted diseases huh? because of that. Because the, bo the body, you ask any doctor, he will tell you the front and back portions of the body have millions of germs. Huh? It's a dirty. Huh? But when they indulge with such uh, women, they get polluted, huh? contaminated, and they feel severe pain, suffering. Then they have to spend a lot of money for the doctor. Huh? So that's uncleanliness. Huh? So sexual, uh, improper sexual connection is uncleanliness. Huh? So that is uncleanliness. Third is, so if a boy is clean, that means he doesn't unnecessarily uh, middle, middle with opposite sex. There's a time for everything. Huh? Like at the age of 27 or 28, you know, parents are seeing a match for a girl from a good family, boy from a good family. They are brought together in a sacred tie. Huh? And then, you know, Pani Grahana, you know, Kanyadan happens properly. And they stay together. And they use sex life for procreating children and growing them in Krishna consciousness. Huh? That is a clean life. But unclean life means illicit sex. Correct, no? And uh, mercy. Uh, mercy means it's opposed to meat eating, isn't it? Like uh, killing chicken or cocks or killing uh, goats, and killing cows. That is very harmful, very violent activity, which produces terrible karma. Mm -hmm. Or aborting children in the womb. Mm -hmm. So one should give up all that. Therefore, one should follow the principle of mercy. Mm -hmm. In Kali Yuga, you find all these things happening, correct? No? Children are aborted. Men, women come in illicit relationships. And when the baby pops up, they abort the child. Hmm? So it means it's combined with uh, uncleanliness and violence, both. <laughs> Correct, no? They are breaking two principles. Cleanliness also and mercy also. Both they are breaking. For the sake of taste buds, people are eating any, nah, nah, any kind of thing. Hot dogs and hamburger and all that. Hmm? Similarly, people are smoking, drinking and everything they are doing. That's, they are breaking austerity. Hmm? And only one is remaining truthfulness because in this age, if somebody is a cheater, he's exposed very easily in this age because through media exposing is more easy. Correct? Now, even now, if somebody is a cheater, he can't cheat for a long time. He's exposed very soon. So, truthfulness is still there to some degree. Hmm. So, but if you become a Krishna conscious devotee, uh, surrender to Krishna, and then you follow these four principles, austerity, cleanliness, mercy, truthfulness, then you become a strong man of character. Then you are competent enough to get away from the clutches of yeah, like that he says. <laughs> so. so, let us note this statement. It's a very important statement.
So, Papa says, this is 117.24 verse which we read now, right? One seventeen. The same purport, Papa says one more thing as you go below. He's talking about these principles. Let us go one more thing, I'll show you. Now here, see here what he says. By the influence of the age of Kali, even a pauper is proud of his penny. Smayamana uh, Madaistava. Three things he said, no? The women are always dressed in an overly attractive fashion to victimize the minds of men. And the men are addicted to drinking wine, smoking, drinking tea, chewing tobacco, etc. All these habits of so called advancement of civilization are the root causes of all irreligiosities. And therefore, it is not possible to check corruption, bribery, and nepotism simply by instituting you know, statutory acts and police vigilance. We have to bring about Brahminical culture, he is saying. And then he will say here, because of that there is so many other problems in society, he is saying. So, but we will read there, towards the end, there is one important point here again. So we must always remember that false pride or intoxication are too high an estimation of one's own values of life, undue attachment to women or association with them. An intoxication of any kind will divert human civilization from the path of peace, however much the people clamor for peace in the world. So the preaching of the Bhagavatam principles will automatically render all men austere, clean both inside and outside, merciful to the suffering and truthful in daily behavior. Correct, no? This is what Iskhan has brought about by Prabhupada's preaching. Hmm? That is the way of correcting the flaws of human society, which are very prominently exhibited at the present moment. So, what we have to do, I am going to go into detail now. So, in following the four principles, so never take any intoxicating substances. <clears throat> and this is not very difficult to do. Many, many of you come from good families, you avoid uh, you know, smoking. Like, you know, smoking, tobacco, liquor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are examples, isn't it? Yeah. One should never entertain. In this con, we follow even one step higher. You know, additionally, we also follow even coffee contains caffeine, tea contains nicotine. Even that also we avoid. Mm -hmm. So this con is pretty strict about these things. And similarly, mercy avoid. Fish, meat, and eggs. Um, this is what Prabhupada gave. What is the meaning of avoiding meat eating? Fish, meat, and eggs. Some people think egg is vegetarian. Egg is not vegetarian. <laughs> so if you because the egg will eventually hatch and chicken will come out, it's not vegetarian. Even the egg, what they call as ahimsa eggs, is actually coming from menstrual fluid of a chicken. Very impure it is. One should not eat those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, truthfulness. Avoid gambling. And also Okay. This is also not very difficult. These are also very easy. Now the second one,
This is the second one. Huh? No sex before marriage and no extramarital affair. That is illicit sex. So in the West, when Prabhupada introduced these four regulatory principles, you know, one uh, Mr. Goldsmith was telling Prabhupada, Swami, the austerity, mercy, truthfulness is all right, but cleanliness principle you can just keep it. Huh? Because in America, people don't follow it very easily and your movement cannot become popular. Hmm? Prabhupada said, I have not come here to make the movement popular. Hmm? For the sake of pleasing Americans, I can't compromise on one of the four limbs of the, the Dharma bull. Hmm? So, so Prabhupada instituted all the four. You will see that. Hmm? So, now, therefore, let us put them here. Let us see this fourth one for for us to follow this principle in this age. It's very pretty challenging due to various reasons, so that I'll elaborate it more. Many things can happen. You know, for example, one case is when living ready chases after Maya. Hmm. For example, you say Billo Mangal. Billo Mangal after Chintamani. Correct, no? He was chasing after her. She didn't chase after him, but he was chasing after her. Correct, no? Yeah. Did Haridas Thakur go after that prostitute? No. She came after him. Correct, no? When a living entity is threatened by Maya's allurements. So, somebody is subjected to allurement. See, when a living entity encounters Maya while endeavoring for Krishna, <laughs> like Ajamila went to forest to pluck flower. Hmm? At that time, he encountered Maya. Correct, no? In the form of a low-class woman embracing another low-class man. Correct, no? He was smiling. So, he encountered Maya hmm? in, the, in the forest where he went to pluck flower. Although he never intended to see that sight. Was he, did he intend? No. He accidentally so that side, correct? No? Yeah. So. See here, the living is surrounded by good association. You can't blame the It's getting good association. Kala Krishna Das, you know, he is having good association. Correct? Who? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted him as his own personal servant. So he got personal association. So, but still, did he take advantage of it? Huh? He fell down. You can see that. Mm. Yeah. So this is this, this is also observed. Sometimes it is not that one does not have good association. One has good association, but one takes good association cheaply. Huh? 
and then uh, voluntarily goes after bad association. Hmm. That is Kala Krishna Das. Ah, huh? uh, yeah. Oh, many of them don't know. Okay. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to South India, he had one servant called Kala Krishna Das. Huh? He took him. So when they went to Kerala side, there is one group of people called Batahari's. Huh? So these Batahari people were a small, uh, like nomadic community. Hmm? They wanted to increase their population very fast, and so that they can become prominent in society. And they had a few women with them. They wanted to increase their population. Nowadays, many religions want to increase their population. Correct, na? They're trying to do <laughs> like that. They also wanted to increase their population. So they were catching men and taking into their tent and getting them, uh, getting them to. You know, connect with their woman, and then they can multiply their children, number of children. That was their idea. So here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going with Kala Krishna Das, and they captured this fellow. When uh, when Mahaprabhu was busy with something, they took him to their tent and showed, "We'll give you so much wealth. We'll give you food. We'll give you this. We'll give you that." And then uh, they showed a beautiful woman also. Now Kala Krishna Das was about to get polluted by them. That time Mahaprabhu reached there. Mm -hmm. And then he told them, "Hey, what are you guys doing? He is my only servant, you know, traveling assistant. You are taking him away." Mm -hmm. And they said, "You get lost." They started throwing weapons at Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. But the same bladed weapons, when they came toward Mahaprabhu, they took a U-turn and went and attacked them only. And their hands and legs were cut. They started screaming and running away. Mm -hmm. And then Mahaprabhu, taking advantage of the opportunity, he caught hold of the shika of Kala Krishna Das and dragged him out of that group and took him away. Mm -hmm. Then Mahaprabhu chastised him after returning him back to Jagannath Puri and handed him over back to Nityananda Prabhu. And told Nityananda Prabhu, see, he is supposed to take care of me and be my assistant. And uh, he is running after those guys. That's why I wrote, when a living entity is surrounded by good association, is uninterested in Krishna. And he you know, goes after Maya, isn't it? See here, yeah. uh, actually when uh, Chota Haridas mm, was told to bring some rice for cooking for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so he went to one house, so there he saw one Madhavi Devi. Mm -hmm. She was not very young also, she was a little elderly also. Mm -hmm. But he, he threw a lusty glance at her mm -hmm. and then uh, got the rice and came. When Mahaprabhu ate that cooked rice, immediately he could sense that there is something wrong. He asked, who brought this rice? Then they said that Chota Haridas brought it. From where, he asked. Then, he, then they told it from Madhavi Devi's house. And Mahaprabhu immediately understood that he, he has had an impure attitude, mentality. So Mahaprabhu banished him from the association of devotees yeah. because of his dusty dealing. Mm -hmm. So that is Chota Haridas. Actually, he was given a service. He went for doing that seva to Krishna. But in the course of that seva, he got allured by somebody and then he, of course, he didn't do anything wrong, but even for that, Mahaprabhu wanted to set a very strong premise how one should be clean in dealings. Huh? One should not even glance at a woman very improperly, like that. So, that this one is similar to the third one, but why am I putting separately? The third one is for a pious person and the fifth point is for a spiritual person, correct? Huh? The third person is pious and ignorant of spiritual values. Huh? Ajamila was a Brahman, correct, no? Was Brahman, was he aware of Krishna consciousness and holy name and spiritual world and all in detail? Was he aware? He's not aware. Therefore, I am putting them in separate category. Hmm? Ajamila and Chota Haridas. Chota Haridas, he is an association of Vaishnavas. He is a proper devotee. Even after becoming devotee, even after being taught the higher values in the higher taste, huh? Still, one can get misled in the name of service to Krishna. One can get carried away, correct? No? Like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Correct, no? Sure, but I'm coming and I'm trying to attack Rama, mm-hmm. Lord Rama. You will see that. Or, uh, Kushanabha's daughters, by Vayu. So that I will I will show you the stories. So now out of all these different categories I showed you now, five categories now. Mm-hmm. So the second category I feel is very important. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you the reason why. See, if you are in first category, you chase after Maya, we can't do much for you. Yeah. <laughs> Correct? No? You are yourself running after Maya. Huh? You, you are getting devotees, Sangha. You leave and then you run after Maya, then we can't do anything. Mm-hmm. And also, the third one, when a living day encounters Maya while endeavoring for Krishna, Jamila. Hmm? And that is also boys who are pious, who don't know Krishna consciousness. Hmm? They have to face their, many boys actually have good character, they fall down. The third, third one, I'll give you an example. One, one pious boy from South India went to, went to America. You know, he, he comes from, I mean, good uh, traditional family mm-hmm. from South. And he went for studies for MS to America. Mm-hmm. But in there, he saw boys, girls had come from all over the world, huh? different places. So he saw one Chinese girl who was very slim and beautiful. He went and told her, your fingers are so th- slim and beautiful. Huh? He started getting connecting to her. He told her, come to my room, I will teach you how to make ma- muffin cake. Huh? So she went to his room. In the name of teaching her muffin cake, she liked it very much. In the name of teaching her muffin cake, he got close to her. And she is an ignorant woman. Huh? I mean, she has no knowledge of what is soul, what is body, nothing. Huh? Mm-hmm. So he pro- proposed to her that we will enjoy and she also agreed. And they both fell down. Huh? So that is the example of a pious boy coming from a pious family, but who is a man of good character, but his character was not that strong that he could resist the temptation. Correct, no? He fell down because he didn't have Krishna consciousness. Correct, no? Then he became completely shameless. Huh? So he, in this way he became attached to her. No? And then he made up his mind to marry her. But she said, no, no, no. I cannot marry you and I, my, parent, my parents have cho- chosen somebody else for me. She wants to go. So this fellow started drinking because she's not marrying him. <laughs> His parents are shouting in India, come back, <laughs> don't marry another woman from some other place. So when the parents are not happy and she was also running away, this fellow became a drunkard, he became a drug addict, he ruined his whole life. <laughs> that is the example for which one? Third one. <laughs> we can say, in a pious, in a pious living in India encounters Maya uh, while endeavoring for Krishna. We can say, South Indian boy, Chinese girl, hmm? and write this. You understand, no? You can understand the example very easily. You're all college students, correct, no? You see these things happening or not, correct, no? Yeah. Hmm. And uh, and also when a living entity is around, like Billu Mangal, for example, he was staying at his house. He was not in any big good association. He was also a Brahman, but uh, he didn't have any great association, so he chased after Maya, Chintamani, correct? No? Yeah. But uh, the, the third one, sorry, the fourth one talks about when the living entity is surrounded by good association, he is uninterested in Krishna. Mm-hmm. And that is sometimes due to offenses. If you commit offenses to devotees, uh, or if you are committing sinful activities, we lose taste in Krishna and Krishna's devotees. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Or it may be due to, uh, you know, not regularly reading, hearing. So regarding that, I want to say a few minutes about that also. See, for example, lack of regular reading and hearing is the spiritual weakness. Hello.
it is more chance of fall down correct na lack of reading and hearing regular reading and hearing leads to spiritual weakness and low spiritual immunity hmm? that that leads to more chance for vibration in this connection uh, the japa talk i was telling every morning i'll repeat that example you know for example two things one has to take care of the surroundings yeah. is the first thing so yeah around your house if there is a gutter which is stagnated gutter hmm? water that produces mosquitoes and germs bacteria as well as you know correct no and they, you can't even see some of them with your eyes but then as they increase in number they start coming into the house you know and then they start uh, or sometimes it may not be gutter you ate food and you didn't clean that place mm-hmm. or you kept the vessels unwashed then cockroaches increase rats increase and the rats go and put their mouth everywhere cockroaches are also inside the grocery in the kitchen and all so what is increased uncleanliness mm-hmm. that leads to infection mm-hmm. that can increase diseases eventually it can lead to death also mm-hmm. if one is not careful so these are all mm, not taking care about the surroundings in the same manner a devotee sometimes may be careless in taking in infecting association yeah he may be careless about it for example you have some bad friends you know with whom you kept friendship and they may talk some dirty thing to you because dirty things once they talk and go away you don't forget it very easily and good things they evaporate very easily bad things they stick on you know, how many have experience correct now yeah because of their material world they will put some they will crack some dirty joke and go away but then you will remember it hmm? or they give you some cinema magazine which is not very pure I mean, very dirty cinema magazine hmm? or sometimes they show something in their screen huh, which is not to be seen mm. you saw it huh. so it's bad association mm. or it may not be friends you yourself are surfing something and you came across some pop up very dirty pop up something like that you got polluted by in your mind by that these are all keeping our surroundings unclean that's the meaning of that so that infects us the infection comes how do you know like one time i was going in the train i was sitting in the top and you know, down down there was an old man <coughs> i was coughing and so much of mucus and coughing all through his journey diseased man i was sitting probably the germs were all around him i didn't know so as soon as i got off from the train i went to the temple i also got similar kind of thing <coughs> coughing and and went to doctor immediate doctor said contagious some contagious diseases come so it took me like 15 20 days to get rid of it taking some antibiotics and everything so you can see that uh, if you don't take care of your uh, uh, you know yourself while living in a in the world of allurements uh, and if you don't keep away from tempting environments uh, then you are inviting trouble correct no so be very conscious about it you know? what are all the polluting agents in your life each of you have to find out for example boys going to college you know one has to deal with other bad boys sometimes the other bad girls sometimes one has to deal with bad books bad movies you have to go to wifi for doing some education or your project or something so you have to deal with it in a very careful way it's like dealing with fire or electricity electricity is good but if you miss and electricity you'll die by a shock fire is good it can cook but if you miss and it we are gone isn't it so take care of surroundings another thing is when uh, your immunity level is high even if your surroundings are bad due to high immunity you don't catch any interesting disease correct no because your body is able to counteract that infection like for example say you go to your sanatorium where everybody is having tb you know tuberculosis and you have a low immunity you go there then you capture it also because you have low immunity and they have a disease from here it goes here it comes to you correct no so the material world is now in a very contaminated state in kali yuga and if our spiritual immunity is very low then we walk in the world what happens the impurities flow into our heart you understand no but if i increase my spiritual immunity which means i become very stout and strong in spiritual life how do i do that by shravanam kirtanam smaranam and krishna seva 
and by respect for the vaishnava hari guru and vaishnavas faithful adherence to the guru parampara mm. and powerful morning program an intense and offenseless chanting of the holy name mm. and reading prabhupad books contemplatively from multiple angles and discussing with devotees you know and rendering innumerable services and filling up our day morning to night mm. with so many krishna seva activities not leaving any room for maya to sneak in and keeping away from all tempting environments so you get very very spiritually your immunity builds up huh? you become very stout and strong in spiritual life who is a stout and strong devotee in spiritual life one who has a d- deep rooted faith hmm? it's like uh, for example uh, you have uh, one place i saw they were actually going to make a building they were saying but they were digging and digging digging ground going deeper i said hey building to you have to make it up <laughs> what are you digging they said no, it's going to be a very big building it's going to be like you know 30 40 story building so therefore what are we doing now making foundation so if the building has to be very tall then foundation has to be has to be very deep hmm? so that is the meaning of building immunity that means i make a spiritual foundation very strong so these are the things huh? like uh, the more i am delighting in spiritual activities like what i told you that makes like if the root of a tree is very strong and it is very spreaded out and deep also you know even if a storm comes the tree cannot fall correct no so even if somebody tries to make me fall down i cannot fall because i have a very deep rooted foundation like haridas thakur for example he could not be allured correct no mm-hmm. similarly you will find i will read out from ramayana i will show you how krishna was daughters yeah. mm they could not be allured by vayu hmm? or how shurpanaka could, uh, could not agitate rama or lakshman hmm? although she offered herself they were not agitated so that's because of very high character and that's what prabhupada wrote in the beginning here if you if you see i i see what he says such strong men of character are competent enough to get away from the clutches of maya that means hmm, by following this four principles mercy austerity truthfulness cleanliness you become a very strong man of character and you become competent even if maya offers herself you can say no so one time a boy was arguing with me that prabhu if i don't go after a woman but a woman is coming to me an unknown woman some somebody unknown to me she is good looking woman she is coming and proposing to me that so we both will go for uh, dating or we'll go and enjoy mm-hmm. now we are going out somewhere she is saying that she has a car she comes from a rich family i can take you you just cooperate with me for my enjoyment she say so he said you know what's wrong then going because you know i i don't commit sin who is committing he said she is committing sin you know and i didn't do anything i didn't propose to she proposed to me she is a good looking girl coming from good family she has a, a lot of money she has her own car she just says come come with me let's go to lonavala and enjoy in a hotel and come she is calling you know what's wrong if i go if i ask any of you what would you say any of you what's your answer where is the mic yeah if you raise the hand mic will come to you anybody want to give a try yeah is good eh? is actually wrong to go no you can give it him he will try you will say no no this thing you give it him he will show that this thing yeah 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 actually mike is, is working yeah yeah uh, actually it is wrong for him to go because he is also indirectly indulging in the sin okay uh, he is saying the why is it wrong for him to go because he is indulging in indirectly in the sense indirectly in the sense okay thank you others anybody else yes our spiritual immunity will decrease ah uh, spiritual immunity will decrease there will be hole in our spiritual immunity by care- carelessly going with that gradually means our uh, sadhana will also decrease correct yeah. okay so if people may even give up the sadhana after completely now when they go into such association okay anybody else anything to add more to this Ah, yes he is breaking cleanliness principle so yeah. he is breaking dharma ah, ah he is breaking dharma because he is breaking the uh, cl- uh, principle of cleanliness yeah 
whether she may be breaking because she is a foolish woman ignorant woman uh, like a pig you know or a dog who does not have any knowledge she is a ignorant woman hmm? but we are not ignorant see you are knowledgeable she is not knowledgeable hmm. you know what is dharma she doesn't know what is dharma so if a adharmic person is proposing a adharmic proposal so what should a person knowing dharma do you should rectify him correct him you should say see you are not aware the result of adharmic activity is sin and the sin leads to suffering uh, so you will suffer we will suffer actually it is like both the people entering fire somebody want to enter fire they are also calling you please you also come let's both burn together mm-hmm. that's what that's like that so if you tell the person what you are uh, embarking on is a very dangerous thing mm-hmm. and also you should tell if you are interested in me Yeah. then we will talk to our parents you talk to your parents i talk to my parents then we can marry once you are married legally wedded then there's a sacred tie huh? it's a sacred tie it's called vivah yagna uh-huh. then uh, then a man is allowed to uh, beget children and all that that's allowed so another thing we can consider is that if a woman says come let's enjoy you should say that see you are not independent because women are always protected by a man Who, whom is she protected by her father after marriage husband after husband takes an yes son mm-hmm. so right now you are saying let us enjoy come let's first go to your father first and ask what is his opinion about this correct mm-hmm. right, no she will say oh no, no no i don't want to tell father that means you are acting independent of your father that is adharma correct right, no that you are also doing adharma and if i cooperate with you then i am also doing adharma then we both become like dogs <laughs> and we both will suffer correct right, no and you also should internally heart of heart know that although this woman is a foolish woman she actually uh, does not know dharma uh, and i am aware of dharma and i can't touch a woman who is a property of another man for example if there is a car which is not locked can you go and sit in the car and take it and go away huh because every car belongs to somebody So without the permission of the master of the car, can you use it? Similarly, her master is who? Her father. Without the permission of her father, can a boy go and enjoy with her? No. Of course, if he enjoys, then he will have to suffer. And amongst the sufferings also, for different activities, different sufferings are given. You read the fifth canto of Bhagavatam. For those who do illicit sex in the Naraka Lokas, the twenty-eight hellish planets, one will be. You know, taken to your hell where one has to embrace a burning, red hot coal like body, fiery body, yeah. And we will be, of course, with this body you cannot embrace because with this body if you embrace immediately it will burn down, correct? No. One may think, oh, it's very easy. We just embrace and it's burned down. No, we will be given a special type of body which is called preta body. The preta body is subtler than gross body and grosser than subtler body, grosser than subtle body. Um, subtle body is a man buddhi ahankar mm-hmm. so <clears throat> over and above that there will be a, another body given which is called as preta body which is little more grosser than subtle body which can which can take the suffering but not die huh? that type of body is given in the hellish planets so one will have to embrace that body for long period of time and our, our body also burns that body also burns that's why i told you entering into fire example i told you which means she is actually pulling you into fire mm-hmm. a long period of time and this is said everywhere christians also talk about burning in hell because the burning thing is given hmm? in the many of the shastras you will find that there are terrible sufferings in this life and in the next life also hmm? because god is not cruel <clears throat> he has instituted a system of marriage where he sanctions marriage in a certain way correct no this type of marriage is allowed this is allowed this is not allowed so one shouldn't do that hmm? see somebody may say these four principles as to you know ma- mercy austerity cleanliness subsistence if you want to follow you follow i don't feel like following somebody may say it's not a question of choice if you don't follow you have to suffer and if you follow then you are released from that suffering it is for our good we are following this so but most fools don't know in the modern times although they may be phd they may be post doctorate they don't know the basic tenets of life because they never read the scriptures the uh, all they are the jugglery of words they are wasting their life so in the ramayana 
that is one section we will uh, okay i will show you all So this is a section where, when Lord Rama goes to the, you know, on corridor. You can see. Yeah. Here it says, yeah, as uh, winter gradually set in, the morning sunshine became pleasing in the sense of touch. Okay, you can see now clearly. Yeah, now <clears throat> Ram and uh, Lakshman and Sita, they were living in Panchavati. Uh, where there was a beautiful lake, there was a greenery and the forest. Very nice description is that there were beautiful pink, uh, pink and yellow lotuses in the lake, and peacocks were dancing. Very nice setting. Uh, although it was close to the area where the rakshasas were also around, and the brahmanas wanted protection from the rakshasas in performing their fire sacrifices and all that. So Rama was living there in Panchavati. So one morning, when Ram Lakshman took a bath, and they were conversing about their religious duties. A rakshasi happened uh, to come on the scene. Upon seeing Rama, her heart immediately became saturated with love. With his glowing greenish complexion and lotus petal eyes, Rama appeared to be the uh, Cupid, like a Kamadev, in human form. Rakshasi, however, had an extremely ugly face. A large protruding belly, withered breasts, deformed eyes, and copper-colored hair. Mm -hmm. Whereas Rama's body was youthful and well-proportioned, muscular and bearing all signs of royalty, <clears throat> the Rakshasi's body was quite hideous and on the brink of middle age. Although she could change her form at will, she became so passionate upon seeing Rama that she forgot to change her revolting appearance. <laughs> in some places it is mentioned that she had changed, whereas in some places it says she has not changed. She approached Rama and saying, My dear handsome one, Please tell me who you are and uh, why you have come to the forest dressed like a hermit. Indeed, you are dressed in the garb of an ascetic and are wearing matted locks of hair. Yet you are wielding a bow and keeping a woman. Why have you come to this Rakshasa infested region? Please tell me who you are and I will fulfill all your desires, like that she is telling. And reply, Rama is briefly explaining all the incidents leading to his exile. He then asked Rakshasi who she was. The love-stricken Demonus replied, Hear the real truth, O Lord of Side One. My name is Shurpanaka, sister of Ravana, Kumbhakarna, Vibhishan, Khara, and Dushana. I live in this forest and strike fear into the hearts of all creatures. Although my brothers are powerful, I surpass them all. I must frankly say I have become overwhelmed with love for you. My mind is made up to have you for my husband. Give up your ugly, deformed wife, for she is not worthy of a great hero like yourself. I am very powerful and can travel at will. Thus, I am suitable partner for you. First, though, I will devour the flat-bellied Sita and your brother Lakshman. Then we will be free to revel together in the hills and valleys of the beautiful Dandakarinya forest. Like that, that was her plan, <laughs> which she proposed. See, first of all, if a man is married to a woman, another woman should not distract him. Correct, no? From Nowadays, they show in TV series also such movies. A man is already married to a woman, a college girl comes, and she enters into his life and she speaks in a very, very sweet manner, dallying with him and the man gets allured. He thinks, my wife is not that great, this college girl is great. And he gets into illicit connection with her, wife comes to know, she jumps into a well. Huh? And then she is saved and all, these kind of stories they show, huh? isn't it? So, similarly here also you find, he is already married, his wife is also there right next to him. Now she is going to eat his wife. Eat Lakshman and then she is saying we both will enjoy life. 
so which which clearly shows a lusty woman you know can do anything hmm? can even kill somebody also hmm? and what is their lust actually women's lust and man's lust are different women's lust means they are looking for a suitable partner you know who will maintain them for whole life and who will have sufficient money and a man of good character who will not leave her who will be a very firm shelter for her huh? and who is courageous who is very powerful who is famous uh, who has adequate money and is having a reputation in society uh, he may be a celebrity hmm? he is, is respectable at the eyes of the masses because by connecting with him i will also be i will be who's queen his queen huh? so in this way women are very fond of such men those who are that is why even amongst the brahmacharis the brahmachari is very very smart and learned and intelligent uh, and very famous and he has made many achievements they have to be very very careful hmm? because many women think that oh he is a very capable hero huh? he is a suitable person for me because of which uh, i can also impress the world and he will he has enough money and he will take care of me he is very intelligent things like that people have idea like that nowadays even in colleges and companies Uh, many girls directly go to boys on the face and propose on the face mm-hmm. actually this is this is no surprise for me mm-hmm. because when i was working probably it was in 88 or 89 when i was working in a company there was one girl in the same company who came and asked me what is your gotram she asked i didn't know why she asking gotram so i said i said my gotra is bharatwaja gotram i said mm-hmm. then uh, two days later she came and asked you know if there is a girl who is of the same gotra will you marry or not you know i said see the girl of the same gotra uh, you know is like a sister you know? the same blood is flowing in the two bodies coming in the same nakshatra same lineage you know? they should not marry i said um, but then she said but what are your expectations from a wife so this is how many women start i said why what are you talking i am planning to be brahmachari i said Yeah. Yeah. I said I am looking for a suitable organization. At that time, I had jo- I hadn't joined IIT. It was after my under undergrad I was working, and then later I joined IIT before joining IIT. Hmm. So I said I am looking for organization. I went to many many organizations. I am looking for a suitable organization to join as Brahmachari. She said, Brahmachari, what is this? Why don't why do you why not give a life to a girl? Huh? if you give life to a girl that's a great service in society also hmm? then i i told her see there are 99.9% of the fellows are giving life to some girl hmm? everybody but how many become brahmacharis how many become preachers of uh, vedic wisdom hmm? i said the whole society is degrading whole world so i i have not found a guru but i'm going to search for a guru hmm? but once i get a guru i will give my life to him hmm? i said so uh, then she was also talking to others connected to me huh? and then i came to know that she is uh, trying to sort of uh, she was not like shurpanaka or somebody like that she was coming from a good family nice uh, person but at same time why why was she doing this because everybody in this world is looking for a good a uh, good partner huh? good partner good person you know yeah, especially nowadays girls go and propose to a boy why <clears throat> if they know that a boy is a good boy like many of you i mean uh, You you are all studying in a good college here, so when the girl sees that he is he is chanting Hare Krishna, hmm? he goes to his con, and these con people follow four related principles. Hmm? Because now many boys are also characterless nowadays, many girls are also polluted already before marriage. Hmm? So boys are also worried to marry a girl who may be polluted, correct? No, and girls also want, don't want a boy who will ditch them and run away with another girl tomorrow. So therefore, there is a fear in the whole society. so it is it's not a surprising thing if a girl comes and asks you about your whereabouts which place you come from who is your father and uh, what what is your uh, surname and you know uh, you know your north or south or east or west uh, you know you're so nice uh, isn't that and then they have, they will eventually come to the point i am just thinking in my mind uh, you know of uh, getting married to a suitable partner someone like you what do you think you will ask me that so you may also my lord in this entire world of 8 billion population this personality has chosen me the hero huh? you may think that 
ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಶಿ ಈಸ್ ಶಿ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಯು ಬಟ್ ಶಿ ಈಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ದ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ಹರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಶಿ ಈಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ಶಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸೆ ಗೆಟ್ ಲಾಸ್ ಶಿ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅನದರ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ನೋ ದೆನ್ ದೆರ್ ವರ್ ಟೂ ಅಸುರಸ್ ಸುಂಡ ಉಪಸುಂಡ ದೇ ಬೋತ್ ವರ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಗರ್ಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ತಿಲೋತ್ತಮ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ಆಸ್ ತಿಲೋತ್ತಮ ಸಿ ವಿ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಯು ಬಟ್ ಯು ಟೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಹೂಮ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಅಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಸೈಡ್ ಯು ಗೈಸ್ ಫೈಟ್ ಹೋಬರ್ ರಿಮೈನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಎಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾರಿ ದಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಶಿ ಸೈಡ್ ಯು ಗೈಸ್ ಫೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಿಲ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಹೋಬರ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಮೈನಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಎಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾರಿ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಹೂಮ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಹೂಮ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಆರ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ಹರ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಶಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವುಮನ್ ಆರ್ ನವರ್ ಅಲ್ಯೂಡ್ ಬೈ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ಅ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಬೈಸಪ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಫ್ಯೂ ವುಮನ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಅ ಪಾಕೆಟ್ ಸೈಜ್ ಹೌ ಬಿಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪಾಕೆಟ್ ಸೈಜ್ ಹೌ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫರ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ರೆಪ್ಯುಟೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ದೀಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ದಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಗಾಡ್ ಹಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ದ ಸೈಕಾಲಜಿ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಯು ಸಿ ಶಿವರ್ಪಣಕ ಇಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯಾರಿಯಿಂಗ್ ರಾಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಕ್ರೂಯಲ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಈಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೀತಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಬೋತ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರಿವೆಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ದಂಡಕಾರಣ್ಯ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಪೋಸಲ್ ಹಾಂ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸಿಂಗ್ ಟು ರಾಮ ಸೊ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ರಾಕ್ಷಸ್ ಯು ಲುಕ್ಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಆನ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಸೊ ಒನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ಇಫ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸಸ್ ಟು ಯು ಯು ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಕಮ್ ಟು ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಯು ಬಿಕಮ್ ವೀಕ್ ಮೈಂಡೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಯು ಸಕಮ್ ಟು ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಯು ಲೂಸ್ ಕೆನ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಸೇ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಮೈ ಓಕೆ ಇಫ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಕೇಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಯು ಯು ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅಗ್ರಿ ಯು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ವೀಕ್ ಮೈಂಡೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಸೇ ಎಸ್ 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 ಐ ಆಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಯು ಲೆಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅವರ್ ರೊಮ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಟುಡೇ ಯು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ರೊಮ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬ್ಡ್ yeah your consciousness is no more stable because now you have a new partner you are disturbed by that yeah yeah let's hear slowly slowly you will leave devotee association and start staying with the girl only yeah you won't be able to do krishna consciousness and that sense gratification sense gratification and krishna consciousness go well together or ill together ill together you can't lit up fire and same time pour water not possible now you all have enthusiasm because you are clean now huh? the moment you connect with a woman like that slowly slowly the first thing you will do is you say prabhu ji morning program is difficult for me prabhu ji chanting is difficult for me prabhu ji reading is difficult for me prabhu ji i will stay nearby and calm and nearby means you will stay 5 uh, kilometers away <laughs> you will stay huh? and then slowly slowly you will tell her you also come nowadays many places boys go stay together correct na huh? some places they live in two buildings when they keep meeting some places they live in same room also nowadays many places unisex saloon they have huh? unisex massage center they have huh? everything has come now india also india has become like west now hmm? exactly correctly said that so one will start living with her then one will become like ajamila correct na what happened ajamila then he become a modern day ajamil that yeah. that's the only credit <laughs> you are not a old ajamil you are a new ajamila correct na yeah anything else can happen the academics will be ruined completely ruined no more actually when a man woman attraction happens girls don't get disturbed actually if they get a boy who is a fool huh, they will tell the boy you be after me and i will study and they will get good marks and go you will see and then in case you failed they will connect with
and then Yamadutas are waiting for you after death. Huh? They take you for a special punishment, as I told you, <laughs> isn't it? That they have to give administer that also. And also, you become disoriented and directionless in life. And you are breaking one of the principles which I told you, which is cleanliness. Correct, no? As the Rakshasi looked upon him with love-filled eyes, Rama laughed heartily at her proposal. <laughs> and Rama heard it. <laughs> he had a good fun. Rama then jokingly said, I am already a married man. And certainly a young beautiful girl like you could not tolerate living with a co-wife. Mm -hmm. My brother, however, who is an ever greater hero than myself, is without a wife. Therefore, I suggested you marry him, he said. She is calling her as a young beautiful girl. She is the most ugly. And uh, how she looked like, we told you. Huh? But Rama is just joking. Shurpanaka took Rama's words seriously and left his side to face Lakshman. Saturated with lusty desires, she said, My dear handsome hero, you are indeed even more powerful and attractive than your brother. Therefore, I consider you to be even more suitable for me. See, suitable for me means I am in the main person. Huh? Everything is who centered? I centered, yeah. Come, make me your wife. And we shall roam together through the forest enjoying conjugal bliss, she saying. Lakshman smilingly replied, Oh, soft-skinned and lovely-limbed lady. <laughs> so he's calling, he's calling her soft-skinned and lovely-limbed. <laughs> you should know that I am simply the servant of my elder brother. Thus, if you were to marry me, it would mean that you would be no better than his maid servant. I think you would be much better off by becoming Rama's second wife. Because what he's saying is, I am not a great person, I am only servant. And Rama and Sita are my Swami and Swamini. So I am serving them. If you marry me, that means you are marrying a servant. So your position is low. But if you marry Rama, you will be the hero's wife, like that he's saying. Um, I think you would be much better off by becoming Rama's second wife. For in time, he will surely discard uh, the aging and mishapen Sita, huh? misshapen Sita, and accept you alone. You have such a lovely face, always adorned with sweet smiles. He's saying <laughs> he's also teasing. Huh? You are ample breasts, slender waist, and wide hips. Actually, she had a big tummy huh? and dried up breasts, and an ugly looking face, and and coppery. Hair, it is said, and he's he's telling her, your ample breast, slender waist, and wide hips may will make a man forget all other women. Who could resist you? Marry Rama, and he will cast aside his ugly wife. You see, Shurpanaka was too simple-minded to understand that Rama and Lakshmana were joking with her. Huh? Thus, she again turned to Ram, saying, "You are overly attached to the ugly Sita. Thus, I will eat her up at once and forcibly take you as my husband." See, just now, you see. Now she is saying, I will, how will I take you? Oh. See, this is the nature of lust. So, initially you will see uh, the lusty proposal will look very uh, uh, sweet huh? and very tender. But the tender hands will become steel hands. Huh? You only will be dragged huh? into... Uh, I, I had this experience one time when I was walking in Chennai. Uh, one shop, uh, they were selling some... They call it as a chore bazaar, they call it. They were selling this smuggled goods and all. They sell cameras, they sell transistors, they sell baggy pants, t-shirts, pens. They sell all these things. So I was, that's the first time I had gone to Madras, Chennai. I was walking in the sidewalk. So one, one fellow was saying, I turned around and they were showing, look at this long pen. You've seen this big pen? One feet long pen they had. Uh, they said this pen, this transistor, and there's baggy pants, everything together you get in 500 rupees. Mm -hmm. Something like that, they said. I was charmed, really? Baggy pants, and along with that you get a t-shirt, matching that, and you get the long pen, and you get a transistor also. I thought transistor itself will be 500 rupees. Other things are like free. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me see it. So I went to the shop. Mm -hmm. And they said, see, you get this, you get this, you get this. Everything they put in front of me. I thought the total collection is very good, I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I was a little suspicious. What if any of these items break and they don't work? Then I said, keep it with you guys, you keep it. I will check with my parents and come, I said. But the, one fellow, the second fellow said, no, 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 items touched once, 
you know, cannot be returned back, like that he said. And I was wondering what to do now. I said, no, no, I'm not saying I won't take it. I'm just going now. I will just have one word with them and then I can come back and take it. I said, third fellow was there. He said, hey, rakho paisa. I said, he said, my, my, my Lord, there is a color current flowing through my spine. Huh? And he said that. I was shocked. Because how the first fellow said, Ch -ch -ch, please see this. Please see this also. Take one, two, three. Very sweetly it started. But eventually, the uh, thing was increased. Huh? You have touched it. You have to pay for it. And then what they say? Mark, I will not leave you. You will kill me. I will kill then I had to give the money. I gave the 500 rupees. I took these items. As soon as I started writing with the pen, the refill flew from behind. The pen broke in a couple of days. Yeah. And the baggy pants one day I wore. Second day I put it in the water. It just shrunk this much. Only once. That was the end of it. So the 500 rupees item was a cheating. Good for nothing. So that's how Maya sells her goods like that. Here also she is. Initially she was selling. That I can marry you, I'll be your wife. What kind of wife she is? He saying, you are overlaid as ugly Sita, then lead her up at once and forcibly take you as my husband. So then, he, already, even before marriage, she is doing Tandav on the head. <laughs> she wanted to, correct, no? So this is the nature of aggressive woman. You can see that. Saying this, Shurpanaka rushed at Sita. However, Rama checked her, telling Lakshman, you should not joke with this Rakshasi in a way that endangers Sita. Hmm? Now disfigure her in a way that will teach her a lesson. Upon Rama's order, Lakshmana drew his sword, swiftly slicing off Shripnaka's nose and ears. As his elder brother looked down, Shripnaka screamed out in agony, bleeding profusely. She fled into the forest, and then she went to Janasthan, where her two brothers and Kara and Dushan were living. Kara and Dushan didn't know how powerful Rama is. They just sent fourteen soldiers in the beginning, and Rama, along with Shripnaka, and Ram, Lakshmana, they finished all of them. Then again, she ran back, saying that. Oh, brothers, don't take him, Rama, lightly. Then they sent 14,000 soldiers. Huh? Janasthan, single-handedly, Lord Rama finished all of them. After that also, she didn't leave. She continued her. Then she went to Ravan. She will go, you will see. Uh, later on, you will find that. Here you will find that. So, Shurpanaka will, uh, here you see. First, Shurpanaka says, Ravana became infl inflamed. So, the sister was telling him, see here. Uh, even Karadoshan and 14,000 Rakshasas were killed. Uh, you are a useless king and I predict that you will not remain on the throne for long. Like that she scolded her brother. You are absorbed in your own son's gratification. You are not protecting your sister. Like that she said. Hmm? And Ravana became inflamed by the prodding from his sister. Especially as she did in front of his ministers. Hmm? So he asked, who is this Rama and what is his strength? Was it he uh, that he, uh, that deformed you like this? Speak now, I want to know everything. Shepna is replying with his long, powerful arms. Large eyes, eyes shaped like lotus petals. Rama appears to be the god of love himself. His complexion has a green hue and he is strongly built like a lion. His bow is as subulgent as a rainbow and he stretches it to full length. He shoots golden arrows and resembles one venomous snakes, releasing them so fast that you can't tell whether he is pulling out the arrow or shooting it. Although he is the most heroic Kshatriya, he has dressed himself in tree bark and deer skin and keeps married hair. He killed the entire Arnyo Rakshas Janasthan with a volley of arrows. He has such exceptional strength that he has even subdued Kara and Dushan. I am sure he could divert the current of a river or bring down the stars and planets from the heavens. See, this is what a woman is impressed, I told you, know, by the valor of a man. Huh? Chaivalra's nature. And Rama Singhar was Lakshman. He was the one who cut off my nose and ears under his elder brother's instruction. The wife of Rama is named Sita. Now she describes Sita now. She is exactly like goddess of fortune. She has large, dark eyes and the beauty of her face surpasses that of many, many moons. Her smooth skin is the color of molten gold. 
and her slim waist, graceful hips and full breasts make her incomparably beautiful. Oh, Ravana, there is no other woman like Sita. If you were to see her, you would fall madly in love. For she would make a perfect wife for you. I intend to capture her to bring it to you. But instead, I was disfigured by Lakshman. Now, my dear brother, you should go and kidnap Sita. That is, if you uh, truly are as powerful as a hero as you think. See, she's speaking lies. Eh? She actually says, she didn't say that I was lusting after Rama and Lakshman. What she's saying? I was planning to capture Sita and bring her to you. In the course of that, my nose was cut. See, the one who becomes lusty becomes a liar also. Cheater also like that. Hmm. When he heard about the lovely Sita, um, Ravana became fully determined to possess her. He again mounted his chariot and after crossing the sea, went to the ashram of Maricha. Yeah, yeah. So, Ravana became again. So, the, both this brother and sister are rascals because you will find Ravana became madly attached to getting Sita even before seeing her only. He was lusty for her. Eh? And uh, Supna became madly attached to Rama for enjoying him. Both were lusty fellows. Eh? Both these fellows. So, therefore you will find uh, a boy may attack a girl also, a girl may attack a boy also. Both happens in this world. Eh? Both are dharmic. Eh? One, one has no right to take away the property that belongs to someone else, as I told you. Hmm. In the same manner, there is one Kushanaba story. I will conclude uh, with that in five minutes. Huh? It's getting late now. For, if any of you is getting late for the college, you can take Prasad behind. Hmm? I'll finish this Kushanaba story. That is also in the same line, page 26. I can see this one. It's a very, very beautiful last time it is. See here. Yeah, I can see this one. See, after traveling all day, the party of uh, Vishwamitra and Ram and Lakshman, you know, they all uh, reached the Swana River. So there he was selling, Vishwamitra was selling here. Once there was a great Rishi named Kusha. A direct son of Lord Brahma. Kusha had four Kshatriya sons who founded four cities, one of which was on the bank of river Sona. Kusha, Kusha's son, Kushanabha, begot 100 daughters through Apsara Gritachi. So, when these girls, so that means Kushanabha and Gritachi, they had 100 daughters. When these girls grew up, they were very beautiful and would happily play together on the banks of the river, Sona river. Once a demigod of air, Vayu, he happened to see the girls and became captivated by their exquisite beauty. Approaching them, Vayu said, My dear beautiful girls, if you all become my wives, I shall, I shall transform your fleeting human beauty into ever fresh celestial youthfulness. He said that because human youthfulness lasts for some hundred years. But if you make it celestial youthfulness, you can live for a thousand years. Because you will become whose wife? My wife. You become my wife. I will take you to heaven and I will give you celestial youthfulness by giving you Amritam. You can drink Amritam and you can also live for a thousand years like me. The girl said, no attraction for Vayu. However, an instead felt insulted. They replied, we would never think of choosing our own husbands. We will only marry according to the choice of our father. Being the daughters of a great Rajarishi, who is that? Rajarishi? Kushanaba. We certainly have the power to curse you for your vulgar behavior. However, we shall not do so, for we do not wish to diminish the accumulated merit of our austerities. Amazing, no? <laughs> what a deep statement. Huh? See, I heard in Vada, Govardhanaka village when I was living, the one fellow was teaching about the snakes. He said that every snake is given, a, like we have keep in a bottle, no? Like that they have a, uh, tooth in which they store the snake, they store the poison. So that is a limited quantity. And they will only use that for catching prey. Yeah. There was a prey which may run fastly away from them like a frog or something. They hit them yeah. with that. Then the creature cannot move ahead. Then they will use it for eating, eating them like that. Otherwise, this poison they don't unnecessarily waste. If a human being is passing by, 
sometimes they do a bite called as raw bite we call it raw bite means they bite him with the tooth but it is not poisonous but most of the time people uh, fear too much because out of fear only they suffer more <laughs> so they were saying that they use poison in a limited fashion for self defense and they use it more for catching prey you understood now similarly we also should know when we become angry on somebody and curse somebody our accumulated austerities become diminished tapovalam reduces when you become lusty your tapovalam reduces when you become greedy you are breathing heavily and you are greedy to accumulate too much then your tapovalam again decreases so these are all things which reduce our tapovalam so they were thinking that that's what happened to vishwamitra you now he became lusty after menaka he lost his tapovalam later he became uh, greedy to prove that i am greater than vasishta then he went trishanku swarga again he lost tapovalam then he became angry on ramba who showered the parijata flowers on him then he again lost tapovalam so because of repeatedly losing the tapovalam therefore he got it took long time for him to become brahmarishi correct no so here these girls are intelligent they are very careful to accumulate the austerity the merit of austerity is like every one of you sitting here you are attending the morning program you're chanting dancing reading the scriptures taking prasad living with devotees leading a pure life you don't even know how much uh, merit of your austerity you have accumulated now hmm? why devotees are very charming and very attractive because after years of accumulating the merit of austerity is what they have been performing they look very effulgent huh? even in america when prabhupada was there many professor used to say that your disciples are so joyful looking and their faces are very bright huh? and they are, they are they have become so cheerful how ugly they were before huh? so proper told the devotees later on anyone who chants hari krishna and rises early in the morning and adopts a sattva guna lifestyle huh? and eats only prasad you know their skin becomes very effulgent also huh? and their face becomes very cheerful and uh, they become free from lamentation and illusion and fear because of that they look very charming and so much so that even outsiders are able to observe that even professors observe that these people have become so uh, this thing so these girls also were very intelligent they thought that if we curse this by you then some of our austerity tapovalam will be lost so they didn't curse him why you who is easily angered became highly offended taking revenge he subtly entered the bodies of the 100 girls and by his mystic power distorted their bodily features when the girls returned to the palace crying their father was shocked to see that they all had been transferred into hunchbacks all 100 of them became hunchbacked women in reply to kushana bas inquiries the girls related all that happened maharaj kushana kushana bas congratulated his daughters for refraining from cursing vayu and began considering how he could get them married that means kushana bas didn't tell the girls hey you could have cooperated with vayu and why you didn't do that you lost your beauty he didn't say that what he said well done my dear daughters you have been sticking to path of dharma that means you didn't oblige to why you who was a fool who was very vulgar at the same time you didn't curse him and uh, you didn't lose the uh, merit of your austerity so he appreciated them and then he started thinking how to get them married previously there had been one uh, uh, brahmachari named chuli who had been performing austerities an unmarried gandharva girl attended to him like a male maid servant eventually chuli became pleased by her selfless service and offered her a benediction the girl requested the rishi to give her an exceptional son while allowing her to remain a virgin so chuli agreed and thus appeared a mind born son of the great ascetic prowess named brahmadatta it is a manasa putra later brahmadatta ruled as a king and it was he whom kushanaba decided would be a suitable match for his daughters so i heard one more story about brahmadatta uh, i will tell you that uh, this thing immediately after this see that's after being invited to kushanaba's palace brahmadatta accepted the 100 girls upon touching their hands at the marriage ceremony one after another their bodily deformities vanished and each girl became beautiful again and vishwamitra then concluded his narration by explaining kushanaba had no son however so he performed sacrifice for, for the purpose as a result gadi later on born to kushanaba and i am son of king gadi he said so that means he had one son gadi 
and hundred daughters, uh, Kushanaba had. And from that Gadi, who was born? Vishamitra was born, like the Vishamitra said. So, now, uh, how did this Brahmadatta become so powerful? I wanted to know. That simply by touching the girl, they lost their hunchbacks. And the reason given in another place is, Brahmadatta never missed his Gayatri. Three times a day he would do Gayatri, Pakka. And because of regularly doing Gayatri, he got that Brahmatejas with which he could touch them and make their bodies. And immediately, hunchbacked woman became a very beautiful woman. Like that. But why did I tell you the story? In this story, a vulgar Vayu, he came and tried to give you know, propose to them. Correct now. There in the other story we read, that Shurpanaka is trying to come and propose to Rama, Rama and uh, Lakshman. Which means sometimes boy, a girl proposes to a boy, sometimes boy proposes to a girl. But all living entities have come in this world with the mentality of enjoying. Huh? Uh, and they are blind to dharma. Huh? They are ignorant to dharma. So whether a boy proposes to girl or a girl proposes to boy, the other person who is a devotee, devotee should be alert, red alert, huh? and not give way for uh, committing any blunders. Because if any devotee uh, does blunder, then because you are knowledgeable, knowledgeable person means for one to whom much is given, much will be expected. So let us write the opposite formula and conclude this. Huh? So now regular spiritual inputs. In regular spiritual inputs daily. That leads to regular and intense we can write. Correct, no? So regular and intense spiritual inputs daily if you give Nityam Bhagavad Seva and morning program as I told you, intense chanting, offenseless chanting and uh, that means you take shelter of Krishna very nicely then you get a high spiritual immunity mm -hmm. and good clarity and everything. So, and then one more thing I told you here. Mm -hmm. So this gives high immunity but then you also also keep See, we keep a surrounding association clean, then what happens? It ensures safety in our spiritual life. Plus, it gives you time for spiritual focus without distraction. If surroundings are not clean, surrounding association, then it always distracts us from our focus. But if surrounding association is good association, clean association, we don't, uh, we keep away from tempting environment, then uh, distraction is not there, focus is good, and we are also more safe. Like I told you, when there are no mosquitoes and viruses and cockroaches and rats, then the infection is not there. Hmm? Otherwise, the infection danger is always there. So, increase your immunity also. Hmm? Same time, keep away from uh, those uh, environments which putrefy and which also increase infection. Hmm? So, in this way, by, by this we can practice our virtual life nicely. And... Uh, Coming back to this original point which I read, such strong men of character were competent enough to get away from the clutches of... Maya. So this is how uh, Prabhupada taught his devotees, how they can get away from clutches of Maya. Maya finds it very difficult to capture you. You don't come in her grip. Huh? You, you slip out very easily. Huh? Because... Uh, 
she finds it difficult to capture because the devotees are protected by Krishna. When you follow these four principles, mm. you are always protected. Sri Prabhupada ki, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. We are very thankful to Proji. So beautifully explained um, this particular shloka and gave for five clauses how illicit sex, uh, uh, unclean behavior can lead to what all problems and five clauses how a living entity in different different situations gets into it. And very practical, down to earth, very uh, solutions what we should take care we don't get into it. It will reunite spiritual life else. So we are very thankful to Proji for coming and giving us his association, such beautiful uh, class also. We will thank Proji by loudly chanting three times. Three. 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 So we have with us also uh, uh, various devotees, as you, as you might have seen over here. They are all the senior devotees uh, and are from different temples. They have come to Radha Vindavan Chandra because Sadhu Pushan camp is going on, which Prashan Pru is taking. So we are very blessed by their association. So I'll just call out the name and uh, uh, and then we'll do Hari Bola the last. From Selet, which is in Bangladesh, there's Satyavrat Gopal Prabhu, uh, Lila Murthy Krishna Prabhu, Naina. You can raise the hand, they will know. Yeah, one by one is hey, tell the name. Uh, Satyavrat Gopal Prabhu. Yes. Ah, Hari Lila, Mur Lila Murthy Krishna Prabhu. Hari Bola. They both are Selet, huh? Yes. Yeah. Nayana Viram Krishna Chaitanya. Select uh, is it Devarshanath Prabhu is there? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And uh, from Mayapur. Devarshanath Prabhu was in America. You were also in America? Yeah. All of you? And which places? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So you came from Select. He did it from West. He came back now? Yeah. Devarshanath Prabhu is in America, no? Almost two months he's going to be there, I think. Okay. He's also, a very senior man. Pandit Gudadar Prabhu, Devarshanath Prabhu. And Mitra Go Prabhu and for fourth one or one more also. They are all very senior people. Okay. Ah, Tribhanga Shyam Prabhu. Correct. <laughs> yeah, correct. We have also a uh, devotee from Nepal and Mayapur Dham. What are the names? Uh, from Mayapur is Sammohan Gaur Chandra Prabhu. Rebol. From Nepal, uh, we have Kripalu Gaur Sundar Prabhu. Hmm. We have Vedvit Gaur Prabhu. Haribol. And Madhav Harinam Prabhu. So let us, uh, and we have Dayalu Gaur Prabhu from, you know, he's also joined the PDC from Divai Patil. So let us all welcome all of them by Loudly Shining Three Teams Haribo. And surely we have with us our very, you know, Leer, Antadip, Prabhu. Yeah, <laughs> Antadip Prabhu, who always keeps on guiding us. And we hope very soon we'll have his association also over here. So let us welcome Prabhuji also by Loudly Shining Three Teams Haribo.